Uh, we're going to talk to you today about different kind of occlusions in layman's term different kinds of bite and that is the relationship of the upper jaw to the lower jaw and I'm going to use this this uh, sample right here to demonstrate what that is like and probably I will even draw on the board what the different occlusions are. They're occlusions or malocclusions. Anything that's varying from the good class 1 occlusion is called the malocclusion. Okay, so even in class 1 we have a thing called malocclusion. So when we say occlusion, again I'm repeating myself, is the relationship of the lower jaw to the upper jaw. In this situation, this is a natural patient natural cast so when we look at them see how they interrelate see how they interdigitate in very simplistic form a malocclusion or occlusion we classify them into three different classes there's class one class two and then there is class three with class one the upper molar is related to the lower molar in this fashion right here okay so that cusp and that fossa are in tongue and groove relationship in class two so this lower molar is behind the upper molar and then in class three the lower molar is in front of the upper molar so if i do, can demonstrate it you look at the front of the person class one usually there is a a very nice profile of that individual a class two individual has a receded chin okay and the upper jaw is sticking out and class three it's the lower jaw that is sticking out how do those happen one is genetics will determine a lot of things okay genetically if you program that way your jaw your skeletal structure will have either class one class two or class three is there anything we could do with that? A lot of times we could do a lot of things with them, especially if we cut the patient at a very young age. Two, the second one is environmental. How does that work? Well, anything that could affect the growth of the, of the jaw will be environmental. A mouth breathing habit, a thumb sucking habit, an allergy. If the patient is getting a lot of allergies, that will impede or affect their airway, their breathing issues. That is environmental which affect the bite of the individual. So let's say you have a class 1 relationship which is this one here. The cusp of the first molar is in the groove of the uh, lower first molar. So that means your skeletal structure, the jaw bones are lined up very very well. Okay? If the jaw bones are lined up very well and then you have contracted maxilla or things are not exactly where you want them to be. After you've done the phase one, that's airway posture and tongue correction, then you might have to have an expansion of your maxilla as well or mandible. For class two with prognathic maxilla and normal mandible, okay, what do you do with those people? When the chin is actually fall off like this, okay, you, you will have to do most likely expand the jaw and then be able to bring back the free maxilla this way okay if the mandible is okay people that have a low uh, deep bite and actually receded jaw what you do is actually you create an appliance that enable them to open the bite and move the jaw forward assuming the maxilla is in the right position okay Again, that is an orthopedic correction. And once you've done that, you also get a good relief of your airway. And if the posture is right, everything just falls into place. And there is the class three. Class three is when the jaw, lower jaw is actually forward and the maxilla is in the right position. Those people, it's a little bit more complicated. Why? Because you have to actually bring the jaw down a little bit and in that situation, this is the only situation that I know of, if you don't want to do a surgical correction, you might have to sacrifice two teeth. To actually tip the, without jamming the jaw backward, you could tip the teeth inward. That way when you do that, you're going to have a relationship. 
Somebody with a class 3, the lower teeth are positioned like this. If you remove these two teeth here, you may be able to do that. Okay? So, assuming that the upper jaw is in the right position. If the lower jaw is in the right position, okay, and the maxilla is retreated back, then you actually bring the whole maxilla forward. And that is done with uh, a face mask, where you actually bring the whole upper jaw forward. Again, that's an orthopedic correction. That's all phase two. Remember, you have to do all phase one in order to get a full and stable result with phase twos. Mm -hmm. When Dr. Estrabilo is talking about phase one and phase two, what he's talking about is what's about posture correction and improving tongue posture, and then what has to actually be done in clinic or by an orthodontist. So this you can do on your own, phase one. So Dr. Estrabilo will actually be offering an online program that will teach you how to do phase one in a 16 week program to improve your tongue posture with myofunctional therapy, posture correction exercises and stretches that he does with his clients in clinic. Then for phase two, if you need to do something to correct an overbite, to have an expansion done, orthodontics, obviously you'll need to go in to a physical orthodontist to have that done. If you live in Canada, you could come see Dr. Estrabilo, but if not, all he can do is phase one. So if you click the link in the description and go to this page here, you'll be able to put your email in so we can send you more information on that program when we get it. So how is the tongue position relevant to all these things, to all these classifications. Doing the tongue exercises to contribute to the position of your jaw. Remember, there's one thing that is really important. The position of the teeth in your mouth are dependent on the force acting on those teeth. Actually, the whole alveolar process plus the teeth. Even the basal bone are affected as well. See, I'm making it very simple. To me, mewing is your ability to actually Use your tongue to, all the, to do a lot of the work, and that is forcing everything outward because the muscle is, of the tongue is inside, and that is the biggest muscle that is counteracting all the muscles on the outside. Now, I'm simplifying it, but again, remember the position of the teeth and the alveolar process in the mouth are related to the forces acting on them. And in the mouth, you have the tongue that's forcing outside, and then you have the cheeks, and the lips, and the chin, and all the muscles out here that are pushing inward. 